Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We hear rumors that Giga Berlin is going to be capable of 1 million Model Ys a year. Personally, I think Berlin is going to give us so much information and intel once it's up and running. It'll be very easy to see what direction Tesla is headed and a good idea of at what pace too. So I thought that perhaps we could try and estimate the potential capacity of Berlin ourselves. Although it's also been reported that Berlin would only be at 500,000 capacity too, this is old news and has been drowned out by everyone's idea of 1 million, and I even hear 2 million from some people. This factory is to supply the entire continent of Europe with Model Y cars. This is Tesla's second largest Model Y market after the US. Tesla want to go big, so 1 million cars seems like a likely figure. But how can we get a good idea if this is true or not? Well, what if we knew the size of all the buildings? So wouldn't it be good to know the floor area of all Tesla's factories so we could compare sizes and we could assume that would be some fairly good data to at least give us some rough estimates of the capacity of each factory. Of course it won't be perfect, but it may be good enough to fit in within one standard deviation. Now each building has all sorts of uses other than just production lines. For example, Tesla's Fremont facility is 5.3 million squared feet, but that includes offices as well as manufacturing. And I believe this might actually be the main office headquarters of Tesla, at least currently. So my rough estimate measuring the building with Google Maps was that perhaps only 325,000 squared meters of that space was actually for manufacturing, which is about two thirds. Of course, we would expect office space in Shanghai, Berlin and Texas too. But if Tesla's headquarters are in Fremont, it would likely have the relatively larger office space than the other locations. I thought the best way we could get the dimensions would be through the local government figures on the buildings to see if there's some sort of resource consent, but this proved not to be easy. If any of you know how to access anything like that and are capable of getting the actual building sizes somehow, then please comment below. So my next solution was to simply measure them from satellite pictures from Google Maps, except unfortunately Google Maps have actually not updated for any of the Berlin site as of yet. However, I was able to find a satellite picture of the Berlin factory of recent, except there was no scale on this image but there was a road I could use as a landmark. I found the road in Google Maps and then measured it with a ruler and found it out its actual length relative to the Google Map scale. I was then able to again measure the road on the satellite imagery to calculate the relative proportion of the road to the factory and then add it back to the scale to work out the actual dimensions of the factory. Now these are rough, but it came in at 1,625 meters by 625 meters. Bear with me here, Americans. It's just a lot easier dealing in meters. But bear in mind, it doesn't matter in one bit because it's all about proportions, not specific measurements. But anyway, this came in at just over 1 million square meters for the Berlin factory. So if we compare this to Fremont at 5.3 million square feet, which equates to 492,000 square meters, which includes a lot of office space as well, remember? Well, it's basically double the size. And if Fremont has a capacity of 600,000, then double that and we're at 1.2 million capacity. Except of course, Fremont also makes the more complex Model X and Model S. Not to mention Fremont was not a purpose-built facility, but was retrofitted from the old GM Toyota factory. And of course, still using old manufacturing techniques, like the Model 3 is not even using Gigapress yet. And the Fremont Model Y is not using Celta vehicle or 4680 batteries. So what if perhaps of Fremont's half million squared meters, only two thirds are actually used as a factory. And what if the Model Y is able to be produced that much faster? Remember, Elon has said that there is going to be a lot of new experimental manufacturing techniques in the Berlin factory. He particularly likes to mention the paint shop. Adding paint to a car is quite a slow process and it has to dry still, of course, too. So perhaps there is some revolutionary new way to speed up the paintwork. In other words, based on this, I don't think it is impossible that this factory is capable of producing perhaps 2 million cars a year, at least eventually. But given these issues with Fremont, it does make it hard to guess. So that's why I thought we could also do something similar with the Model 3 factory in Shanghai. Again, Model 3 Shanghai is not on Google Maps, but I was fortunate enough to find a satellite picture too. Again, I measured a road that was in the picture and used that to put it in proportion of the factory. And the Model 3 factory came in at 784 meters by 183 meters, or 143,000 meters squared. Now, this factory has a capacity of 250,000 Model 3s a year. They do not use die casting, gigapress, 
new paint shop, or any of the new manufacturing advances of Berlin. But Shanghai is one-seventh the size of Berlin. Now, as far as I know, my math tells me that 250,000 times 7 comes in at 1.75 million annual production capacity. Okay, but we also have the Model Y factory in China too. So would it make sense to just compare that factory with Berlin, as they're both Model Ys? Plus Model Y China does use Gigapress. Well, I measured the Model Y China building too, and it came in at 614 meters by 183 meters, which is funny because that means the Model 3 building is just 1.28 times larger. And the capacity of Model 3 being 250,000 and Model Y being 200,000 means the Model 3 capacity is 1.25 times as much, implying the capacity per square meter between the two are very similar. Now, what does that information tell us? Well, with all the advances beyond the Model 3 manufacturing, such as die cast, well, we may have thought that this should be a more efficient factory. And if we use that assumption, then that would mean either the Model Y actually does require relatively more space, perhaps because it's a slightly larger car, or that Tesla are sandbagging the Model Y capacity, and perhaps it might be closer to 250 or 300,000 in China by the time it's ramped up. And perhaps this is why the delivery numbers were so good for Q1, because they're ramping up the Model Y factory much more than presumed. So if we compared the Model Y Shanghai to Berlin, we get a very similar number. Berlin is nine times the size, so nine times 200,000 is a capacity of 1.8 million for Berlin. Okay, so we've just compared the rough size of Berlin's factory to all other Tesla factories with Tesla's claim capacities for them. In every scenario, we've reached a figure close to 2 million, around 1.8 million or so. But that would mean that Berlin would only need to be about 10% more efficient than the others to achieve a 2 million capacity. Remember, Berlin has stated they'll be using 4680 batteries from the start. They've also said they'll be using a new paint system and lots of new technology. Elon says this means there is a production risk, implying this technology is to thus improve the production speed and cost. In other words, 10% increase is probably highly conservative. No wonder they won't want to tell us the actual production capacity. What if it's something like 3 million? That would get too many competitors scared. You don't know what sort of power they might actually have if they really wanted to utilize it. I think best to stay under the radar as much as possible when you're making waves this big. And I'm sure Elon has memorized Sun Tzu. Appear weak when you are strong and strong when you are weak. Anyway, I've based most of my numbers off Berlin achieving 1 million. And perhaps that might be the production rate we see Berlin at some time next year. And maybe although the capacity may be very well up to 2 million, that may not be for some time still. On the other hand, when you put it into scale with the other buildings, perhaps it is. But also we have the claimed 100 gigawatt hour battery capacity for Berlin. Now I believe that these Berlin Model Ys will need less battery. It's rumored that the Berlin Model Ys might be about two to 300 kilograms lighter than from Fremont, which would mean they need less batteries, which would also make them lighter again due to fewer batteries. The current long range Model Y uses 75 kilowatt hours so even if the Berlin models are using 70 kilowatt hours, that would be enough batteries for about one and a half million Model Ys with a factory producing 100 gigawatt hours. But if Tesla were also making standard range there too, then that would likely be a sufficient battery supply. However, it has too been mentioned that the 100 gigawatt hours factory will eventually be scaled up to 250 gigawatt hours, which would be plenty to cover two million Model Ys and likely two million Model 3s from there too which is supposedly the next factory to be built in Berlin. Anyway, this was just from some simple geometry we could use to estimate the size of the factory, close enough to give us some rough numbers to work on. And I wouldn't have thought these numbers would be more than 10% out, which still looks pretty good. In fact, it makes my price targets look too small. Uh-oh. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe.